Hello, I want to talk to you today about the true vine and the branches that are destined to destruction. I don't want to be doom and gloom, but God is a God of correction. He is a, a wonderful fa father, the ultimate father. And I know as a father of eight children that I have at home, that without correction, without discipline, you're going to have a bad situation in your household. And God, being the greatest father of all, knows how to love his children through discipline and through correction. And here we're speaking of the good vine, the true vine, which is the Lord. And you're going to find in all of these messages that we make on this channel, everything always pertains to the love and the grace and the mercy of God, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God is not to be feared as though he's a terrorist after us to destroy us and to terrorize us and to make us afraid of him, but he is full of love and mercy and grace. All that that is seen in Jesus Christ is the forgiveness, the long suffering, the mercy of God. He exhibited all the fullness of God bodily. And we have great, great promises in having this relationship of a vital union, vital union with Christ Jesus through the Spirit. So that's what Jesus is talking about here in John. And we're going through the Gospel of John, this series that gives just great understanding by the Holy Spirit of the nature of God and the promises that we have in Him. But we need to be sure that if we come outside of the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, if we start to veer away from the truth of the Lord and find ourselves in another doctrine or another spirit outside of the Holy Spirit of Christ Jesus, the Lord will bring correction. And that's what the fire is about. The fire is about burning up and consuming all that that is not of God. These are the enemies of God, unbelief, sin, but they're manifested out here in the world in destructive behavior. Not only that, but in things where people oppress others, they elevate themselves so that they might have the power and a hand over others, that they might use those benefits that they've been given by God to actually rule over their brothers and sisters. And this is the bad fruit. This is what we do not want to bear. We want to bear the fruit of righteousness, love, joy, peace, all those things that come from this vital union with Christ Jesus, who is the Lord, who is the true vine connected to the Father. Continuing here where we left off, John, the 15th chapter, first verse, I am the true vine. Jesus speaking, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. I just want to stop right there. And we're just going to deal today just on these first, these first two verses, but especially the first and second part. First and foremost, everything that we've, and you can go back and uh, watch the old videos and messages that we've done. Everything in John is just building on the fact that Jesus is the Word made flesh. You go back to the very first verse of the first chapter, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and everything that was created was created by Him. And He became a man the Word of God indwelt flesh and blood and became a man in the man Jesus Christ. And we beheld the glory of the first begotten Son of God, who's full of grace and mercy and truth. And he came to fulfill all that was written in the law and the prophets, everything that was written of in the Old Testament. Jesus came and fulfilled it to the very T that through his spirit, through his death, burial, resurrection, and our faith, in his indwelling power, his indwelling life, his living spirit that is within us, we could have vital union with him, making us the branches and he being the vine, he being the life of God. We are connected to him by the spirit and by keeping our eyes upon him, by drawing from him, his roots go straight to the throne of God 
out of him is the fullness of God expressed, and it was expressed in Jesus, the man, Jesus of Nazareth. Now it's being expressed in a body who are finding their union in him and who are drawing continually from his source of life, from his word, from his spirit. You can just imagine a tree, how from the roots all of the life of that tree draw up from the soil and the sunshine and the water and everything that's needed, all the nutrients in the soil that are needed. That is the tree of life. That is the Lord Jesus Christ in the midst of the garden, in the midst of your earth. From him comes all of those things that pertain to life and godliness. And we have our ability to have relationship with the Father making him our father, whereby we cry out, Abba, Father, unto the Father of lights, unto the heavenly Father. We have vital union with him through Christ Jesus our Lord. So as long as we're walking in his spirit and in his, in his life, in his nature, we're going to live and we're going to bear fruit. We're going to bear the same fruit that he bore. We're going to see the love of God manifested in the earth. We're going to forgive our enemies. We're going to do good to those that despitefully use us. We're going to pray for those, even those that hurt us. We're going to lift up the body of Christ. We're going to be meek and humble, not high-minded. We're going to show love and kindness and grace. Uh, we're going to bring correction when it's needed, both to our own house and to those that were around as the Spirit shows us, as the Lord unveils the truth behind the situation. And we are going to speak the truth in love, just as the Lord does. There's going to be times when we become angry with the situations, even as Jesus did, and went in and cleansed the temple because he saw that it had become a, a place of merchandise. It was no longer a place where people were seeking for the reality of God in the Spirit, but it had become a way for people to become wealthy in the things of this world and to get advantage over their brothers and over their sisters. All of these things have the tendency to creep in because the nature, the sensual nature of the flesh who dwells in that place of fallen humanity living from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But we have been called unto life. So we're to stay connected as the scripture says, I am the true vine, my father is the vine dresser. So it's the father, it's our heavenly father that brings correction. Isn't that the way that it is? That God is the hand that both lifts us up and brings chastening to us when we get out of the way. And here there is a need for correction in the body of Christ. Now he's, he's not talking about outsiders here. Look again at the scripture. Every branch in me, he says. He doesn't say those that are outside, the Gentiles, or those that are have no knowledge of God. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch in me means he's speaking to those who had the word of God, that have the word of God today, that have come to at least the beginning of the knowledge of the truth, who have come out of the world and into the truth of the life of God through the word. Okay, back in Matthew, the third chapter in the 10th verse, we can see John the Baptist speaking this same thing when he came preaching repentance. And he was speaking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and those religious leaders of that day who were to have God's word, but that had come out of the truth of the true nature of God. And he said to him in the 10th verse, and even now the ax is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. More or less, this was a quotation, or at least a reference, to Malachi the prophet. And if you go to Malachi the fourth chapter, the first verse, For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly, will be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branches. This is the day that appeared, the day star, the day of the Lord, the sun of righteousness, who is the Lord himself, came and began at, as a burning heat, as a burning oven, came. That presence of the Lord is a consuming fire. And he came and began to burn up all that's not of God. The key word here is it says the proud. And there are those who hold up the doctrine 
of pride that you can accomplish the things of God, that you can come and are pleasing unto God or can find salvation based on your works. That is the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And as we can see, this is the very thing that the Lord is consuming and cutting off. Now, God loves the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the religious leaders today that would elevate themselves above all the other people that would say that there's only one way unto God and that's through them. Jesus still loves those people, regardless of the position they've taken, uh, even their hypocrisy. The Lord sees that there's a weak vessel there that's trying to elevate himself above other people, above other men, and hasn't yet learned the way of the cross. And yet Jesus, though he loves them, that doctrine and that spirit of pride, that spirit of arrogance, that spirit of ruling over other people is what the Lord is here today even to consume. And we thank God that this is a continual work of the Holy Spirit to bring conviction and to cause all of the high and lofty ones to be brought down low. Because when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt you. But if you're lifted up in pride, get ready for the fall because the scripture promises pride comes before the fall. If we go back to Matthew 7, 15, Jesus says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. And this falls right in line with the teaching that we're on in John, the 15th chapter, that Jesus is teaching that he is the vine and his father is the husbandman. And every tree, every plant that doesn't bear fruit is taken away. And the truth of the matter is it's going away to be cast into the fire. Now, is it for complete destruction of the vessel? No, it's to break one down that they might be built back up. It's to purify. It's to bring correction that people might find that there is only one way of truth, one way of righteousness, and it is Christ Jesus. And only through union with him will you be able to bear the fruit of righteousness. The other fruit, and we can we, we have to have discernment in this day because there are many false teachers that are still among us with smooth tongues, great charisma, speaking words that are very enticing. And isn't the enemy himself, the devil himself, disguises himself as an angel of light. And he comes as a wolf in sheep's clothing to try to gather the sheep unto himself. But he leads them in a way of destruction because all of the ways of men, though they're right in their own eyes, they lead into the ways of death. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the true power that comes through the cross of Christ and the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. This is the way of grace. This is the way of mercy and the true love of God, that righteousness has been given unto the saints of the Most High God by a gift, by the blood of the Lamb. But we are to walk in continual union with Him, and maturing comes even by that same fire, not by destruction, not, not, not to destruction, but unto maturity, unto a growth. Praise God. And we're going to see that in the verses to come, that the Father, even when we bear fruit, He prunes us or He cuts us back or He brings greater correction, correction that there might be a continual increase. But here we're dealing with those that aren't bearing fruit at all. And they're having to be taken away, at least for a season, that the doctrines that aren't of God would be consumed and burn up by the fire of God's presence. Matthew 23, the first verse, 
rather long scripture here concerning these things, but it brings great understanding to this very concept. Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes, first verse, and to his disciples saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do, but do not do according to their works. For they say and do not, and that's the fruit that we can see, is the works of men's lives, the works of women's lives. Verse 4, for they bind heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves would not move them with one of their fingers, but all their works they do to be seen of men. They make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garments. Now there is a key for discernment in this day. When we see leaders, when we see teachers, when we see those who, though they may be preaching an element of truth, of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, whenever we see flesh trying to boast or make themselves something great outside of Christ, we know that this is another doctrine. And this isn't the fruit of the Lord. The Lord came into Jerusalem meek and lowly, riding on a lowly colt, a donkey. He was down low with the people that he was ministering to. He washed the feet of the disciples. He said, the servant will be the greatest of you all. If you want to be great, you're going to have to get down with people and get down to the place where you're even washing their feet that they might have a clean walk. This is the call of those. This is the the duty of those that are to be shepherds in this day. If you're going to be a shepherd of the flock, you're going to have to love and care for the sheep more than yourself. And that, that requires a laying down of one's life, not an exalting. That's, the, that's an opposition to laying your life down. The good shepherd lays his life down. And, and notice the posture. Laying down is not elevating yourself, but it's humbling yourself. When you humble yourself before God, he will exalt you. And people will recognize it's not you that is exalting yourself, but it's the Spirit of God. He's the one that brings promotion. But if we see uh, individuals, though they may speak truth, when we see them gathering themselves, doing things for a pretense in a show, trying to take the highest seat, which Jesus is going to say here, then we know that there's that this is not the fruit of righteousness. And there's a, this doctrine, this spirit, this way is destined to be taken out of the way and consumed, that the soul might be saved in the day of the Lord. Verse 6, it says, They love the best places at feasts, the best seats in the synagogues, greetings in the marketplaces, and to be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But you do not... But you do not be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ, and you are all brethren. Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. And do not be called teachers, for one is your teacher, the Christ. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted." Now, let me just say here in passing, this is why I desire no title from men. I am not looking to be called teacher or apostle or bishop or pastor or any other title. And I want to say this emphatically. It does not mean that, that I, God hasn't given me a gift, okay? And I may be able to shepherd some sheep. I believe that God, if, if nothing else, he's made me a shepherd over my own home. I have eight children and my wife, and God has made me shepherd of at least that flock, if not any more, okay? So if somebody said that I have the gift of a pastor in that regard, or even in leading other sheep or caring for other sheep, then I would not uh, discourage that. But as far as trying to always put a title on me, and, and call me the pastor or the bishop, I, I really would discourage that. And the reason why is because Jesus here in the teaching, no, he was talking about calling people father. We see that in the Catholic church, calling people teacher, calling people rabbi. But brothers and sisters, that has just easily crossed over in our day 
into these other titles that have become acceptable. Look, we are brothers and sisters, and if you want to be called a bishop or you want to be called a pastor, that, that that's between you and the Lord and the people that follow you. But for, as for me, I will not go that direction, and I would I would say use caution when taking on titles and always having the need to be elevated in what people call you. Back to verse 13. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and the dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautifully outwardly, but inside you are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Verse 28. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but in, inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I'm, I'm skipping down here to verse 37. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I tell you the truth by the Spirit of the Lord today, that those Pharisees and Sadducees were a part of that system, of that religious order that was in Jerusalem and all across that known world that was being taken out of the way because they were not bearing the true fruit of righteousness and meekness and grace and mercy. And we saw that again and again when Jesus went to heal the sick, when he brought forgiveness, when he brought grace, when he brought it to the outsiders, to those who were considered to be wine bibbers or drunks or prostitutes. There was always condemnation and judgment coming from the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious scribes and teachers. Jesus was showing the fruit of the kingdom of God. And we find that fruit continually being manifested in his life. And all those who are walking in the spirit, that fruit of righteousness is going to be seen. But to those who are walking according to the religious systems of men, we will see something else working there. And it's because for a, for a person to, to keep their position of elevation, they will always have to find a way to put others below themselves. And so we see something else that's not of God. Let me go to Mark chapter 11 for another visual aid here or another picture, a story picture of what the Lord is talking about over in John 15. Verse 12 of Mark 11, now the next day when the Lord had come out of Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season of the figs. Verse 14, in response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Verse 15, so they came to Jerusalem. Then Jesus went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry wares through the temple. Then he taught, saying to them, as it is, is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. Verse 20, now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Again, 
a perfect picture, a perfect example of the religious system that was currently in operation when Jesus came on the scene 2,000 years ago. These men and women, particularly men that had the charge over the people, they had found all manners of ways to gain power and money and to use their position to rule over others. This is the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which the Lord hates. The leaders and those who have position and advantage over others using it. Here it was to be a house of prayer. That's to be God's house, a place of communion where we can continually have fellowship with the Father through the Son, through the Holy Spirit. But they had made it a den of thieves. Their mind and their heart was set on earthly riches, sensual things, and position. And Jesus said, this tree is not bearing fruit in the season when it should be bearing fruit. So I am going to curse this tree. And that system, which was the Jewish system that was under the law, that which pertained to the covenant and the traditions of men under the old way was cursed and taken out of the way. Now the law is righteous and holy, but we are sold under sin and slaves to sin, and therefore that law, that covenant, had no ability to deliver us. It did exactly what God had ordained for it to do, which was to show us that we were incapable of fulfilling the righteousness of God through that covenant. But the Pharisees had found a way, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious leaders, everybody that was making a profit and gaining position did not want to let that system go because it had given them power, it had given them strength, and it had given them wealth. The Lord said, it is over. It is cursed and it withered up from the roots and the father took it out of the way. Another scripture, speaking of the same thing, up in Jude, the first chapter, the 10th verse. But these, speaking of these men, of these doctrines, of this religious order, speak evil of whatever they do not know. And whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, in these things, they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, have run greedily in the error of Balaam for profit, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. And we'll find in each of those stories, particularly I'll just use the story of Cain and Abel as an example, Abel brought a sacrifice unto God that was, that was received. And that is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, the spotless lamb that takes away the sin of the world. Cain brought the works of his hands, the fruit of the earth, but it was the works of his hands and he was rejected. And this is the way that it is with this system of religion, not only in that day, but in this day. If we are holding to a system of religion, and listen, I love the people in all of the systems of religion. I love those people because God loves them. They are our brothers and our sisters. All those who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they are ours, okay? And they are children of God just as we are children of God. And in the end, the Lord is going to show mercy and grace and they will be saved. And I thank God for it. But that system, that order of religion is being consumed by the brightness of his coming in this day. And it is the ax is laid at the root of those trees and it's being taken out of the way. They're being taken out of the way. Not to be completely destroyed, though that system, that kingdom of men is coming down. So we need to warn people, don't find your attachment to that. Find your attachment to the people of God. You can find your attachment to the people of God everywhere, no matter where they are. And that's what we're desiring to do. We can have fellowship with people. It doesn't matter what order that they're in or what system that they're in. We love the people and we can have fellowship with them. But we're not going to have fellowship necessarily with that system of organization because it is being done away with. It says in verse 12, Jude, these are spots in your love feasts while they feast with you with, without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars from whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. These are grumblers, 
complainers, verse 16. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. This is a common theme, again, that we'll see. Flattery is not of God. We, we're not looking for arrogance or pride or flattery. We're looking for the clear-cut truth of the word. Many people are getting too much caught up in a multitude of words and things that are nothing more than vanity and a lot of form and ritualism. These things, they have an outward form, but again, it isn't the power of the Lord that cuts right to the heart. The fewer words that we need to use, the better. The more honest and truthful we can be, the better. People may say that it's hard truth, Thank God for hard truth. Jesus did not mince words when he told Peter, his right-hand man, his right-hand disciple, get behind me, Satan. You're not savoring the things of God, but you're savoring the things of man, and you're an offense to me. You are in my way. He was not playing games with the enemy that had uh, given that thought in that mind frame to Peter. He was was cutting him from from the roots and getting him out of his way. And praise God, the Lord's going to do the same thing for all of us who have our face set towards the Lord and will not be hindered, will not rest until God makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And we're talking about the habitation of the Lord Jesus Christ, his temple, which you are, beloved, and you've you've been called to be a house of prayer and supplication not a den of thieves. You've been called to be clouds with rain, not without rain, but with rain. You're to give forth the the life and the, the very sustenance of the Lord, that which is needed for people to stay alive. Praise God. You're not to be just a form of water, but you're to be a life-giving source of the very word of God. And you're to have fruit Not to be trees without fruit, but you're to bear fruit in your season. Praise God. And the Lord is able to keep us in that way. That we are joined in vital union to Christ. All of those that are cut off, it's because they refuse to be joined to the humility and the brokenness of the Lord Jesus Christ that comes through the cross of the Lord. We determine not to know anybody except through the cross and by the cross. And in that place of crucifixion, we're all brought to a level where it's the Lord's life that raises us up or we're going to stay dead. But thank God the Lord raises us up. He raises us up to stand before him in his presence to give forth the glory of the Lord as the Spirit gives utterance. These are hard scriptures. People may take these hard, but this is is truth that we need to share in this day. Go to Hebrews 6. This is where I'm going to end this teaching today. Hebrews 6, the seventh verse, For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated receives blessings from God. But if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and near to being cursed, whose end is to be burned. We thank God for Jesus Christ, the true vine. We have a connection to him through the Holy Spirit, through his word. We are finding ourselves in a lowly position in him. He alone is exalted. He alone is the name to be named. He alone has the position. He alone, hallelujah, has the title. We give honor and glory to the Lamb of God, and we declare him to be the priest of the Most High, to be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We declare him to be the shepherd of our salvation, the shepherd of the sheep, the great shepherd, the great apostle. Hallelujah. All things are in him, and we can be found in him through union in the Spirit so that we can find peace and we can find all of the fruit of the Spirit showing forth, manifesting in our lives and in the lives of those around us. We thank God for this truth. A little harsh today, but this is a day for correction because the Lord loves those that he corrects and he corrects those that he loves. Aren't you glad that he loves us enough if we're out of the way to bring us back into the way? And he loves us enough that if we're 
in need of a, of a fire, of a consuming burning to burn up all the dross. He sends the fire. He comes as the fire into our midst in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. And we cry out today for a continual move of the fire of God, a coming of the Lord in fire and in purging in all that we need. Praise God. Be blessed. Continue in the way of the Lord. Amen. <laughs>